Hi, I'm Richard Sedlock. Welcome to Episode 8 of the Green Ninja course on climate science. In Episode 7, we examined how Earth's atmosphere transmits different amounts of different kinds of electromagnetic radiation, and how certain gas molecules in the atmosphere produce what has become known as the greenhouse effect. Here in Episode 8, we're going to focus on an important application of these ideas, Earth's energy balance. We'll also take a sort of bonus coverage trip to Venus to see what it can teach us about Earth. Here are two ways of depicting the varied fates of incoming solar radiation, called incoming solar energy in the diagram, which is from NASA. About 30% of the insulation is reflected back into space by clouds, atmosphere, and Earth's surface. The relevant factors are all colored salmon, according to Apple, in both the diagram and in the flow chart at the top of the slide. This 30% reflectivity is formally known as Earth's albedo. We just talked about this in Episode 7. The remaining 70% of insulation is absorbed by various parts of the Earth system and colored yellow-orange throughout the slide. About 51% is absorbed by Earth's surface, including both the land and the water. About 16% is absorbed by the atmosphere, and about 3% is absorbed by clouds. A fundamental feature of Earth's climate system is that the incoming energy or radiation is balanced by the outgoing energy or radiation. When we reveal the rest of the diagram, we see that the energy ultimately loops back out into space, but always in balance with incoming energy. For example, 64% plus 6% outgoing equals the 70% that was absorbed at the outset. Well, let's look at these energy balances in more detail. This diagram is similar to the diagram in the preceding slide, but more complete in that it shows more factors in our energy equations, enabling us to recognize three separate energy balances. An energy balance at the top of the atmosphere, an energy balance within the atmosphere, and an energy balance at the Earth's surface. Another difference is that this diagram uses the actual amounts of radiation energy in the standard units of watts per square meter. Now, in the next several slides, we're going to look at each of these three balances individually. At the very top edge of Earth's atmosphere, incoming solar radiation is about 342 watts per square meter. This 342 watts per meter squared is uh, insulation that enters the Earth system at the top of the atmosphere. It's exactly balanced by the energy leaving the top of the atmosphere, which includes the two components shown in light blue. First, 107 watts per square meter is reflected due to Earth's albedo. Second, 235 watts per square meter is the cumulative infrared radiation lost to space from Earth's surface and atmosphere. All right, so that was pretty simple. A second energy balance is obtained within the atmosphere itself. The energy gained, 67 plus 24 plus 78 plus 350 watts per meter squared from the four sources shown in orange, is exactly balanced by the energy lost by the atmosphere, 165 plus 324 plus 30 watts per meter squared for the three sources shown in strawberry. Apple calls that color. The third energy balance is at the Earth's surface. The energy absorbed by Earth's surface includes about 168 watts per meter squared directly from insulation and 324 from the back radiation emitted by the greenhouse gas molecules in the atmosphere. This 492 watts per meter squared is exactly balanced by the energy leaving Earth's surface, 24 plus 78 plus 390, from the three sources shown in sort of grass green. By the way, if you're carefully checking numbers, you'll have found that the quantities on the last three diagrams don't quite match those on slide two. For example, the 30% albedo on the preceding slide comes out to 31% on slide 4, 107 divided by 342. Anyway, these minor differences are due to different ways of setting up the physical boundaries of the system. 
each diagram is internally consistent, and the, and the differences in no way contradict the idea of energy balances. All right, with this sort of semi-quantitative understanding of Earth's energy balances under our belts, let's try to predict what will happen when some part of the system is modified. Let's depict the radiation energy balance at Earth's surface this way. The thick yellow arrow pointing downward represents incoming energy. The thick red arrow pointing outward represents outgoing energy. The equal, the equal lengths of the arrows indicates that the system is balanced. What happens to this balance if all greenhouse gases were removed from the atmosphere? So on this slide I've reproduced the diagram from the last slide so that you don't have to flip back. Now if all greenhouse gases were immediately removed from the atmosphere, the atmosphere wouldn't be able to absorb radiation emitted by Earth, so the energy emitted from greenhouse gas molecules would go to zero. This in turn would drastically reduce the incoming energy absorbed by Earth's surface. And this is how it would look in terms of our arrows. We start with a balance, but if the greenhouse gases are gone, more of Earth's energy escapes to space and less is available to energize the Earth. With less energy coming in, the Earth's surface would have to emit correspondingly less surface radiation until the balance is restored. The Earth's surface would cool down throughout this adjustment period, finally settling at about zero degrees Fahrenheit, Earth's black body temperature. Here's a similar sort of situation to evaluate. Start with current conditions with Earth's surface temperature averaging about 15 degrees C and the current amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Now imagine that the concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere increases by 50%. First, sketch two diagrams illustrating how the energy balance would change. Use the arrows, refer to the previous slide for an idea about how you might proceed. Second, how would Earth's average surface temperature change as a result? So pause the presentation until you've tried this. You want to sketch two pairs of arrows and then estimate how Earth's surface temperature would change as a result of this. With 50% more greenhouse gas molecules, the atmosphere would be a more effective trapper of infrared radiation. After absorbing this energy, it would radiate it in all directions, including downward the back radiation referred to in a previous slide. This would greatly increase the incoming energy that's there to be absorbed by Earth's surface. Well, with more energy coming in, Earth's surface would have to emit correspondingly more surface radiation until balance was restored. The Earth's surface would heat throughout this adjustment period with temperatures rising enough to threaten or render extinct life forms that were accustomed to the earlier stable temperatures. Well, this fundamental energy equilibrium, which we can't change any more than we can change gravity or the speed of light, underlies the overwhelming scientific consensus that recent and ongoing increases in greenhouse gas levels are producing a warmer Earth and that we should be very, very concerned. Let's take a trip to Venus. Well, let's compare it to Earth anyway. This may seem like a random irrelevancy, but I promise that it isn't. Based solely on distance from the Sun, we would expect Venus to be warmer than Earth. It's closer to the Sun than the Earth is. By the way, I hope you realize that nothing in the bottom scale, uh, the bottom diagram is drawn at the proper scale. However, the distance from the Sun isn't the only factor affecting temperature. Earth's clouds, oceans, and land surfaces result in an average albedo of 30%. In other words, about 30% of insulation is reflected back into space. Venus, though, is completely covered with thick clouds and has a much higher albedo of 70%. So if we say that the insulation, reserved by you, or, uh, the insulation received by Earth is 100 units, then the Earth would be able to absorb 70 of them, right? Because 30 were reflected away. Well, using the same units, Venus, which is closer to the Sun, receives about 193. But because its albedo is 70%, it only absorbs 30% of those 193 units. That's 58. So Venus absorbs less solar radiation than Earth does. 
what the heck if this is the controlling factor then venus should be cooler than earth however venus is not cooler than earth earth's average surface temperature is about 15 degrees c the average surface temperature of venus while we wait for the results to come in let's peruse this passage about venus from that paragon of scientific insight astrology.com Venus is all about pleasure. We appear attractive thanks to Venus's energy. Beauty is also strongly associated with Venus, inextricably linked to refinement, culture, charm, and grace, all happening at a surface temperature of 480 degrees centigrade or 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, not conditions that are particularly conducive to expressing refinement, culture, charm, and grace. Which says something about the validity or usefulness of astrology, I think. But why is Venus so much hotter if its albedo is so high remember it was it's getting less solar radiation than earth is well the reason is the vastly different nature of the atmospheres on the two planets the chief difference is circled in these yellow colors here venus's atmosphere has over 100 times the mass of earth's atmosphere despite being slightly smaller than earth and look at what comprises venus's atmosphere almost all of it is carbon dioxide a highly effective greenhouse gas in short venus has broiled baked roasted and fried because of a runaway greenhouse effect similar to the situation you examine in slide nine of this episode but with a much more than 50 percent increase in the abundance of greenhouse gases let's get back to earth remember this slide the data come from long ice cores from Antarctica and now Greenland that go back hundreds of thousands of years. The cores clearly show a correlation between higher greenhouse gas concentrations and higher global temperature. The cause and effect isn't simple because of positive feedback loops, but the correlation is clear. In its non-infinite wisdom, humans have been unintentionally conducting a global scale experiment. How will Earth's temperature change as a result of huge rapid increases in greenhouse gas concentrations? Even three or four degrees C of warming will drastically change coastlines, climate, and ecosystems. Our descendants may not think very kindly of us. And that's the end of episode eight.